With everything happening recently with the COVID-19 pandemic, we have shifted our new normal. And that means for us as yoga teachers and spiritual leaders that most of us are doing our work online. Now, I've spoken about this a couple of times past in the podcast, and I wanted to take this podcast to give you a crash course on setting up your online business from start to finish. Welcome to the Modern Mystics Podcast. I'm your host, Alana Kaivalya, the yoga doctor. I'm here to help you realize your potential as a spiritual leader and elevate your work in the realm of yoga, mysticism, and spirituality. This podcast covers all of our favorite topics, yoga, alchemy, astrology, divination, spirituality, psychology, ritual, and mystical practices, both ancient and modern. Get ready to uplevel your status as a modern mystic. In the past couple of months, I have received an overwhelming number of emails, direct messages, and communications from friends and colleagues about how to start their online business. Most of them know that I've been online with my business for about five years now, and of course, I've experienced a lot of ups and downs as well as a lot of growth with my online business. There have been trials and tribulations, and I've learned many things along the way. In 2017, I founded the Upward Facing Business Academy in order to train yoga teachers and spiritual leaders to take their businesses online. So I've been teaching others how to do this for a few years, and I've had great successes with some students who've had launches of tens of thousands of dollars. It's been a really exciting time inside the Upward Facing Business Academy, and as you can imagine, it's hopping in there now. (laughs) So I wanted to start this podcast actually by giving giving you a list of some other resources that are going to help you in comprehensive ways to get your business online. The first are three podcasts that I've already done and already released that are going to be really great as foundations for this podcast. So if you have not yet listened, please make sure that you listen to episodes 12, 17, and 20. That's going to help to give you some information about developing your brand, posting on social media, as well as figuring out what kind of offerings and focusing your offerings a little more carefully in order to position yourself as an expert in your particular area of expertise. Now, you hear me talk often about the highereducation.yoga membership on this podcast, but specifically as it relates to this episode I want to encourage you to join. It's a $1 two-week trial when you go to highereducation.yoga slash trial. And right now, for the reasons that I list on this episode, it's going to give you even more education on building your online business. This is something that we're talking about and focusing on pretty heavily in the membership these days. So you'll have a wide body of support, other colleagues going through the same thing as you, developing their business, and feedback from me as well as live weekly Q&As. So that's a great other area for you to get more information on building your online business. And finally, if you're really serious about taking your business business online, whether it be in response to the current pandemic or seeing it as a long-term route for prosperity and abundance in the future, which of course I highly support, then I would recommend that you check out the Upward Facing Business Academy. It's easy to navigate to by going to my website, alanakay.com. Now, less of some kind of pitch, that was simply a list of other places for you to get more resources, more information, because a lot of us have the time to pour our energy and resources into building our online business. But more than that, we're finding how critically necessary it is. We don't know how long studios will close. And another thing that I'm seeing and hearing from my colleagues is that this teaching online, reaching your students remotely like this, is something that they really enjoy. They want to continue it well into the future, and there are such good reasons to do that. Even when it's possible to go back to teaching at studios, I think we all know at this point that it is impossible to make the kind of living that we really want and desire simply by teaching in-studio classes. 
For the last few years in my Upward Facing Business Academy, I have over and over encouraged my students to grow their business online as a way to create passive income, as a way to have money for a rainy day, and as a way to uh, retain 100% not only of the, the content that they produce, but also of the proceeds. It's a really, really great idea long into the future for you to have an online business, whether it be in addition to in-studio or in-person work or all on its own. So make sure that you check out those other resources because while I'm going to give you a good crash course here in this episode, I want to make sure that you are armed with all of the tools, resources, and support you need to go online with your business and make it a success. So the first thing I want to talk about is a three-pronged communication approach. Now, (laughs) I feel like this might need a little bit of an introduction here because perhaps most of us are yoga teachers or spiritual leaders, and for the most part, we've been responsible for teaching or teaching workshops or retreats or trainings of some sort. It's very common that not a lot of us have ventured into the realm of business or even thought of ourselves as business people. But as a yoga teacher, by default, you are a small business. You are an entrepreneur. There's just no two ways around it. And as a small business owner, it's really important that we put on our business hat in order to make our business grow. And I understand that speaking of it this way can make some of us feel uncomfortable, but it is what it is. (laughs) You are a business owner and you've got to be able to promote your business because you know what that means? When you promote your business and do the marketing, people find out how much you can really do for them. It's through marketing and spreading the word of who you are and what you do that the folks who will benefit most from your work are able to find you. And that's really what this is all about. I know that you know that the work you do changes lives. Why wouldn't you want to talk about it? That's the basis behind marketing. And it just is something you'll have to do as a small business owner. So get ready to wear a few different hats here. And as I like to tell people in my Upward Facing Business Academy, building your business is a spiritual practice. And just like in any form of spiritual practice, there's some times that we have to you know, do the things we don't necessarily love or feel great at, just like sometimes we have to eat our peas. (laughs) So let's talk about the three-pronged communication approach. And really, this is how you'll tell people what you have on offer so that they know about it, so that they can decide for themselves how much they'll benefit from it, and so they can really understand the extent to which you help them create positive transformation. So the three, uh, the three prongs here are number one, social media, number two, email, and number three, live pitches. So let me talk about each of these in detail. The first one, social media, is something that I go through extensively in podcast episode 17. So put a bookmark in that and make sure that you listen to episode 17 if you haven't yet. And in that episode, I talk all about how to uh, make your uh, social media appropriate for your business, how to make sure that you are promoting your business on social media, what to talk about, how to talk about. Uh, It helps you to position yourself as the expert by treating your social media as an extension of your business and by removing most of your personal stuff off of your social media. You want your students, your clients, your colleagues to see you as an expert in your field. And to do that means that you are posting might be a little bit different than it looks right now, which is okay. You'll have to post as a teacher, as an expert, and share with people what you're doing and why. Give them little tidbits and tastes of what your offering is and pitch to them. Let them know if a course is opening up or registration is taking place now, or if there is a deadline, tell them about what your offerings are. And every time you do that, give them a way to sign up. So again, podcast number 17 is going to go through social media more extensively, but it's a huge part of how you connect with your audience online, which is how we connect with our audiences right now. The second prong of our communication approach is email. Now, I don't want you sending this from your local Gmail account. 
it's important that you step up a little bit into your business and stretch your wings there by getting some kind of email delivery system like MailChimp or Constant Contact. These are two very low cost, easy mail delivery systems to use that will help you to start automating your business a little more. And automation is something that I believe very much in because it allows you to relax a little bit. Automation means that you don't have to constantly trade your time for money, but that your business will work on autopilot. So starting at the very beginning of building your business with automation in mind is a is something I highly recommend. So when you have an email client like MailChimp or Constant Contact, you send weekly newsletters. Yes, weekly. I want you to make sure that you're staying top of mind with your audience so that they remember who you are. And every single week, you're going to be giving them something of value in their inbox, teaching them something, giving them a new tool or trick to use, sharing with them a way that that they can uh, change their behavior or make their lives better. Your newsletter will not be about you. It will be about them and how you transform them. And when you're there once a week, giving them something of incredible value, they can't wait to see you in their inbox. And the reason we're doing social media and email is because some people will only be on one. And those that are on both will simply think of you more often. And that's good because anytime you have an offering or anytime they're in need of the problem that you solve, we want them to think of you. Now, as you deliver your valuable content once a week in your newsletters, once a month, I want you to make them an offer. Give them something that they can purchase from you. These people love what you have. They want more of it. And in order to purchase something, they get better access to you. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And many of them will want that. Some of them are fine with your weekly tidbits in their email inbox, but most will want more. They're following you or they're on your email newsletter list because they adore what you do. So let them have more access to that by making a pitch once a month. Now about pitching. It's important that every time you pitch, whether it be via email or live, which is our next communication approach, that essentially you do it as an explanation of this is just the very next best thing for personal growth for your students. That makes pitching easy. It's not like, oh, hey, I have this thing I want to sell you, so buy it. It's like, hey, I'm providing you this incredible tool. But I can do so much more and I can offer you so much better if you sign up for my course or my coaching or my classes. When they hear that this is the next natural step to whatever it is you're doing for free via social media or email newsletters makes it very easy for them to buy. And always, always, always when you pitch, provide some kind of deadline. Registration is open for 48 hours, or registration is only open until a certain date, or I only have 10 spots. Urgency is critical. (laughs) It just is. Every business uses this, and remember, you're a business too. So whenever you do a pitch in your email newsletters or live, tell them that this is the next natural step for their growth, and they have a limited time to take advantage of it. That's going to really, really help make sure people just want to jump into whatever you're offering. If we don't offer some kind of urgency, then it's very unlikely people will be motivated to join you. So keep that in mind with your pitches, because again, as a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, this is simply just something that you'll have to do and kind of get used to. The next piece is live pitches. So our three-pronged communication approach, we have social media, and again, episode 17 for more on that. Email, which you'll be sending weekly a newsletter, pitching once a month, and live pitches. Now, this means a couple of different things. Number one, anytime you show up live for your audience, you're going to make sure you tell them what's next. Now, this means potentially in person. So, when studios open or you resume in person classes, then every time you do so, let them know that they can participate more and do more with you with your online offerings. Hey, did you love this class? Then make sure you join me for my six week online course. Hey, did you love this class? Make sure you join me for my coaching program, which starts tomorrow. 
right? Every time they're in front of you, let them know what the best next natural step is with you so they can take it. Many of us are doing live stream broadcasts at this time as well. So whether that be on Facebook or Instagram or through Zoom, anytime you do a live stream broadcast, make sure you tell them what's next. Now, here is a huge asterisk for you because right now during the pandemic, many people are offering live broadcasts for free, which is okay to an extent, but here's your golden rule. Never do a free broadcast without telling them what's next, without giving them an opportunity to jump into the next paid step with you, right? That's the rule. (laughs) If you feel compelled to do something for free, then make sure you use that as an opportunity to share with them what the next best natural step is. Not everybody, obviously, is going to take that step, but the people who love you the most, the people who really want to work with you will. And unless you share with them what that is, they won't know about it. So I do recommend that if you're doing Instagram or Facebook live broadcasts, whether they be lectures, workshops, classes, courses, whatever you're offering on these free mediums, that you limit it to some extent. And that you do it as a partial, smaller offering of whatever you design as your paid offering. So for example, if you develop a six-week workshop or six-week coaching program, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, then perhaps once a week you go live on Facebook or Instagram to tell them a little bit about that coaching program. So say the first week of the coaching program, you're going to work with them on their money blocks. And so you're going to spend 15 minutes for free on Instagram or Facebook working with people on their money blocks. And in 15 minutes, you'll get them a little bit of the way, but not all the way. And you'll let them know, hey, if you really want to work through the entirety of your money blocks, I'm starting my coaching program on whatever date, and I would love for you to join me. So they get a taste of what you have to offer. It's still highly valuable content, but if they want to work further, then they have to join that bigger offering. This is so important, again, because that free offering is still valuable. People will want it. Some people will want only that, but there are people who want more. Allow them to get more. Okay, so that's it for our three-pronged communication approach, which is so important. You've got to utilize all these different mediums in order to get in front of your audience and tell them what's next. You are a small business. They're going to be totally fine (laughs) with understanding that. And many people do value you. And so you'll give them a way to do that with your paid offerings. Now let's talk about how to deliver those offerings. It can actually be fairly easy. And so the ideas for offerings can be courses, coaching, classes, podcasts number 12 and 20 are going to tell you a little bit more about how to design your offerings, how to niche down, how to really decide what kind of offering is unique to you. That's what people will pay for, is something that only you can do that no one else can do. Um, that's where your value is greatest, okay? So again, podcast number 12 and 20 are going to walk you a little more thoroughly through niching down and deciding on your offerings. As a brief overview, of course, we can do online classes, right? Obviously, that's something that people are doing, but I want you to think outside the box because there is so much more that you can do, especially by being online than just online classes. And a lot of people offer online classes. It's time for you to do something different. So perhaps it's a course which could be delivered live via a platform like Zoom, or it can be pre-recorded so that it is available anytime that people want to take it. Both are fine and both are perfectly acceptable in the world of online uh, learning. So you could just design a course, you could deliver it live, you could have it pre-recorded, you could do a combination of both, or you could do coaching, which is something that people generally pay a little bit of a higher dollar amount for. You could do a time-limited coaching program where it's maybe four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, or you could even do a coaching program that is just monthly and people are a part of that for as long as they want to. 
could be small group coaching, which means you can charge a higher premium for it. You can meet live with them once a week or twice a week, have a private Facebook group. It's pretty easy to set up. All right. So again, check out podcasts 12 and 20 for more uh, ideas on how on what exactly to offer your students. But, but if I leave you with one thing here in this podcast, it is to think outside the box with more than just online classes for your audience. Now, whatever you decide to do, courses, coaching classes, you need a place to put them so people can consume that content. And the place is what's called a learning management system. It's a learning platform. Now, the platform that I use and that I recommend all my students from the Upward Facing Business Academy to use is called Teachable. Easy to find at teachable.com. And they are extraordinary at essentially creating a platform that will do everything that you need it to do as a course creator. It's a very intuitive platform. It's really easy to use. And in fact, this is going to help you bypass some of the bigger expenses of building an online business, which eventually down the road, yes, you might have to pay those, especially if you're serious about being online with your business, which I hope you are. So I talk extensively about start to finish building your business online in the Upward Facing Business Academy, including building your website. But for the purposes of this podcast, keeping it simple, just getting you off the ground, getting you a a business that will run for you at this time right now during this crisis, I want you to take a look at Teachable. It's an amazing platform. It's easy to use. And what it does is it hosts your content So if you want to build, let's say, an evergreen or uh, an online course that is pre-recorded and delivered in perpetuity, uh, you can put put that content on Teachable in a beautiful way. It showcases your videos, your PDFs, your written content, and it guides people through your courses uh, in a really intuitive fashion. So that's really the meat of what Teachable does. It provides you a platform to put your content and organize it in such a way that people then can consume it and take it. It's great for if you want to build a membership, if you want to build an online course, if you want to do online coaching, even if you want to just put your online classes on there, Teachable can handle all of that for you. And not only does it give you an opportunity to deliver that content, it also helps you with selling that content. So natively, meaning within Teachable, you can also build sales pages and check out. Now, what this means to you is that on a sales page, you can effectively sell your course, your coaching, your classes that will have its own link or URL that you can essentially put in your social media post. So social media post says, hey, registration for my course is now live. Here's the link. And people from that social media post click the link and go to your sales page where they learn all about your online course and they can click enroll or buy now. So within Teachable, not only do you have the pages that you need in order to inform people more about your offerings, it also processes payment, which is one of the big questions that I've been getting from friends and colleagues who are trying to get their business online now. Teachable makes it really easy. It can basically act as your website. You just send people to your Teachable school, and from that Teachable school, they are able to check out what kind of courses you have on offer, register for those courses, as well as consume those courses as students. And again, you can do courses, coaching, or classes on Teachable. You could build a membership. Really, the sky is the limit based on the kind of offering that you want to provide. The only thing that Teachable really cannot do are live broadcasts like with Zoom. So if you have a live component of your programs, then you'll do it through Zoom. And that's okay, but that doesn't mean (laughs) that Teachable is not useful. It is. You could even sell through Teachable a live uh, webinar or a live workshop or a live course. It would still have the sales page, the checkout, and perhaps just a welcome page uh, in order to, you know, tell people what the Zoom links are, uh, where, how to use Zoom, uh, give them updates. It would be so easy. Zoom is a really easy. platform to use, and many, many people have been using it. You can also use it for live broadcasting to social media. So it's kind of multi-purpose in that way. So Zoom would be a complement to Teachable only for the absolute live components of whatever it is you're offering. So as far as platforms or things that you need in order to get your business started, number one, 
is a platform like Teachable, and number two is a platform like Zoom to deliver the live components. Teachable can act as your website, your checkout page, your sales page, as well as your course delivery platform. It's pretty all-encompassing, and you could really get started tomorrow, and it's very easy to use. So that's how you deliver the offerings that you're going to be telling people about in your three-pronged communication approach. So on social media, maybe two or three times a week, you'll be telling people what else they can do with you via your paid offerings. In your email, which goes out once a week as a newsletter, about once a month, you'll give them a pitch as to what else they can do with you. And then anytime you are live with people, whether that means physically in person or live broadcasting on social media, you will always tell them what the next step is with you. And all those paid offerings will exist in one place, like a teachable platform, your teachable school which is easy to set up. So you basically have the structure of your business down at this point. Once you've got something up on Teachable, you can restructure your social media posts, you can start sending your emails, and everything then is basically there for you. This is, this is the most basic essential structure of an online business that I could come up with in order to get you started and off the ground now. Because look, This is your livelihood. This is your business. Take it seriously. I know it would be great if all we had to do was just show up and inspire people with classes or workshops. That would be amazing. But it would also be great if in our spiritual practice, we could just sit and meditate for 20 minutes and become enlightened. It would also be great if dinner consisted only of chocolate brownies. (laughs) I mean, all these things would be great. But In dinner, sometimes we have to eat our peas. And in our spiritual practice, sometimes we have to do the hard shadow work. And in our business, we have to do the business elements of this. It's going to help make everything else grow and get the thing that you do that transforms people so profoundly out to a wider audience, which frankly is the magic of being online. When you're online, you're not limited to the people in your local area. You can find people who want just what you do all over the world, and it will make a big impact. And I know that that's what each of us wants, is to make a beautiful, big, and profound impact on the people that we touch with our gifts. So hopefully this crash course in setting up your online business gets you that next step in the right direction. And I want to once again remind you that I have tons of resources around this. I have been teaching people just like you to take their spiritual businesses online since 2017. So first off, make sure you listen to the other podcast episodes, number 12, number 17, and number 20. If you want more live support and coaching around this, join the higheredication.yoga membership. There's a $1 two-week trial if you go to higheredication.yoga slash trial. And a lot of your friends and colleagues are already in there talking about how to do this, and I'm giving them extra support during this time. And finally, if you're really serious about building your business from start to finish online and you want to put your nose to the grindstone and get it done then I highly recommend that you join my Upward Facing Business Academy. There's easy links for that either through the higheredication.yoga membership or on my website at alanak.com. So I really have every level of support for you to reach the best level of success possible with your spiritual business. And I deeply wish that for you. I deeply wish for you to be able to make a greater impact with your audience as well as a greater income in your career. Until next time, namaste.